Good morning everybody! My name is James Cook and welcome to my vlog. Today I'm going to Norwich. Why am I going to Norwich? I need to charge up my car. The good news is Norwich is only 120 miles away, so I better get cracking. Just quickly getting the car washed as well because yeah, I don't want to have the dirtiest car there, which <laughs> is usually what happens. We don't need a charge. I just wanted to, uh, you, you know, bath and break. Yeah. So we are currently going to the second of the electric forecourts that Griggs Gridserve have set up. So hence why we don't need to charge here because we're going somewhere where they should have lots and lots of quick chargers. But, following the always be charging mantra, as I happen to need a bathroom break, I figured the car could do with a little zap. And also it means that if for some reason the chargers aren't working or whatever, we'd have enough power to get back here because um, we're going to pick uh, these kids up a bit later. So we can't be late at the other end of the day. By the looks of things, Tesla are in the process of uh, expanding the site. <laughs> Brilliant, I love the way they do that. Charging infrastructure gets a, a bit of a bad rap sometimes, but honestly, people these days have no idea how lucky they are. You know, I remember the days when you used to have supercharger opening parties, and that was because there was only two or three superchargers in the whole country, so when they opened a new site, it was a big deal. It's just, it's a whole nother world that we're living in now. Thank goodness. Norfolk has long been a, a real sort of black spot for charging. So I am, I mean, I remember th this Thetford supercharger made a massive difference when it first opened because it enabled Teslas to, to range out around Norfolk, you know, a little bit more freely. Whereas before that, it was just, oh, absolute nightmare. I think I went up here once in my Tesla and luckily we were spending the entire day at somebody's house so I plugged my car into their wall socket and that gave us just enough power to get in and out but it was a bit close. So yeah, it's, it's much better now. And with that, I think it's probably about time to get back on the road. got a supercharger here. <laughs> Brilliant. Ah, oh, they do like to make a nice fancy electric forecourt, don't they? Ah, oh, I'm gonna need my, um, yeah, that's in the back. This being a new supercharger, they've only got the CCS um, one on there, which is fine, because I've got the adapter. But yeah, if you've got an older Tesla, make sure you get your adapter. I wonder if they're doing idle fees here today. Right, let's go get lunch. <laughs> this is like Disneyland for electric car drivers. I'm so sad. I like really, this, this really does excite me. After years and years of really rubbish electric car charging facilities, I love it when people do it properly. Wonderful grid serve. Awesome. Got loads of stuff to tell you about this place. So they've got an enormous power supply into this site, as you can imagine. 
There's an 11 kilovolt substation just over there behind some wooden panelling. They've also got on-site battery storage, which helps them to not only sort of serve the local grid, but also supply power in the most efficient, presumably the most cost-efficient way for themselves. All the sort of other bits are over the top and the, the charging is underneath. We'll go have a look at that in a minute. They've got what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, eight. There's eight Tesla supercharger stalls here, which are all 250 kilowatts at the moment. They're going to be upgraded to 300 kilowatt soon, I believe. This is the future. We just need one of these, like everywhere. In fact, just rip up all the petrol stations, pop these in. Job done. So if you lease your EV through GridServe, because they do EV leasing now, you get a thousand free miles of charging, which you can get from all their various sites. I think they've only got a couple of these dedicated electric car charging forecourts, but they've got quite a few sort of other more medium power sites around the place. I uh, had a very interesting talk from the CEO. Unfortunately, I couldn't get any of the audio to go into the camera in an effective fashion, so I'll just have to sort of fill you in on roughly what was said there. But fundamentally, it's a bit of a race against time to try and limit the, the climate change increase to one and a half degrees Celsius. I mean, I love the fact they've got like really decent facilities here, which makes such a change because, y you know, when you charge an EV, it does take a little longer than your petrol or diesel you know, stops. So you want to do something else at the same time, whether that's a bit of shopping or get a snack or a lunch or go to the loo, whatever it is you require, you need that to be on site with your charging. And that is exactly what grid server building here, basically. And they're also quite uh, into you know, making their own power. I think they said they're sort of, they're, they're a, a net zero um, contributor from their EV charging sites because of the power they generate, which is awesome. I'm trying to think, is there anything else? You see, the problem is that people are dumping information on me and then I've got like, I've got to regurgitate it into the camera before I forget it all. <laughs> which is probably about what's happening at the moment. Um, yeah. Anyway, I cannot wait until these things are everywhere. So, there we go. I'm also hoping that I'm not getting idle feed because I'm pretty sure my car is finished charging now. Let's go have a look at these chargers. Ooh, look at this. I love a good electric car charger. Look at that. Welcome to the future. Nice selection of EVs. It amazes me how common electric vehicles are these days. They seem to be more or less everywhere. And lots of different kinds as well. It's really very encouraging. Seen a few of these on the road now. Seen lots of those. Some of those. Actually quite a few of these as well. These things are everywhere. They're like the Ford Fiesta of the EV world and quite a lot of Model Ys these days as well. Over there, behind that wooden fence in the background, is 6.6 .6 megawatt hours of battery storage. That's so cool. And so that's the equivalent at four miles per kilowatt hour of 24,000 miles. And that is how they make sure that this site doesn't impact the local grid. And also presumably helps, you know, balance that local grid as demand fluctuates as it does basically all the time. Battery storage, it's essential for, you know, making renewable energy work well. And EVs can definitely play their part in that too, because of course they all have big batteries just built in. They've got slower charging bays as well for those people that really want to spend an hour or two here and get some lunch. Fantastic. Nice disabled charging bay as well, nice and wide. Well, this has been awesomely good fun. Unfortunately, we have got to head off now because I need to go and pick up V's children. And uh, that is about two and a half hours drive away. 
So, departure time is now. I'm really pleased I came though. It was well worth the drive up here. Very interesting. This is clearly the future, which I'm pretty sure I, I said when I last visited one of these. And uh, I look forward to them opening more of them. And not just because I liked the uh, complimentary coffee, although I did. Right, well, I hope you've enjoyed today's vlog post. If you have, remember to leave a like and share it and subscribe. If you haven't already, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, links are in the description. Big thank you to my Patreon supporters because you guys rock and are extremely patient. And I will see you all in the next episode of my vlog. Bye. It's been 24 hours. Get that in shot. <laughs> Funny. Oh, it's windy here. Oh, this might not work. Uh, let's give it a go anyway. So hopefully this will work then. Oh, it's waxed. It's going to slide in the blinking wind, isn't it?